Hi, welcome back. So now let's go to bradyarrhythmias and bradycardia. So let's see what we have here. So here we have a regular rhythm, narrow complexes. However, the rate is slow, which is about 40 beats per minute. So this is a bradycardia. Otherwise, the other things look normal. So this is a sinus bradycardia. There is a regular rhythm. The rate is about 50 beats per minute. So it is a bradycardia. There are narrow complexes. However, the P is inverted. So this is junctional rhythm. So in junctional rhythm, the P wave can be absent, inverted, or follows after a QRS. If the rate is about 40 to 60, then it is junctional rhythm, like in this case. However, if it is 60 to 100 beats per minute, then we call it accelerated junctional rhythm. If the rate is more than 100, then it becomes junctional tachycardia. Junctional rhythm arises from the AV node and the impulse can travel to the ventricles and also the atria. So this is also a regular rhythm, which is very bradycardic. The rate is about 40 beats per minute. However, there are broad complexes and the P is absent. So this is an idioventricular rhythm. So an idioventricular rhythm is when we can see something like this with a rate of less than 50 and there are broad complexes with absent P wave. So this rhythm originated from the ventricle tissue, which becomes the pacemaker. If the rate is more than 50, but less than 110, then we call it accelerated ventricular rhythm. If it is more than 110, then it becomes ventricular tachycardia. So how about this one? So we can see that it is regular. The R to R interval is still the same throughout the strip. And then we can see it is narrow complex. The P wave is present. However, the PR interval is prolonged. So we can see that the PR interval here is very prolonged. It is more than five small boxes. However, the PR interval are always of the same length. So this is, and the P also is always followed by QRS complex. So you can see P followed by QRS complex throughout the strip. So this is a first degree every block. So in first degree every block, we can see that the PR is prolonged, but the P is always conducted, meaning that there is no drop beats or miss beat. So now let's go to the next one. So here we can see that it is regular, but suddenly there is something happens there. Suddenly, there is no QRS complex. So this is what we call a misbeat. So we can see that it is regular rhythm, narrow complex, and then we look at the P wave. So we can see here the P wave is normal in shape, and then we look at the PR interval. So we can see here the PR interval is prolonged, and then it becomes more prolonged, and this one is very prolonged and suddenly it stopped. I mean, there is no QRS conducted here. So this is what we call a Wenkerbach phenomenon. So the P is present and the PR is prolonged and it's getting longer and longer and the P is not conducted. So this is what happens in second degree AV block morbid step 1. So here, what happened is, this is a disease of the AV node. So like the first degree, the first degree is also a disease of the AV node. So maybe the AV node is very tired, having an AV node disease, or it just ischemia there. So what happened in this condition, in Mobis type 1, second degree AV block, the P is prolonged and prolonged, the AV node is becoming tired, and more tired and suddenly it just fell asleep and reset. After the reset, it becomes its normal self again. But then the cycle still continues. So this is what we call Mobis type 1, second degree AV block.
So now let's have a look at this one. So it is almost similar to the previous one, regular rhythm, but we can see there are few misfits. Now we look at the P wave. P wave is normal in shape. And then the PR interval. The PR interval is the same throughout the ECG strip. But they are misbeat. So this is what happened in second degree every block type 2. So this is a disease of the distal conduction system. So sometimes it passed the pulse, the impulse, and sometimes it just couldn't pass the impulse. So sometimes there'll be misbeat. But the PR interval is still the same. So now let's have a look at this ECG. So we can see here that the R to R interval is regular. So this is an regular rhythm. And then we can see that uh, the rate is about 40 beats per minute. There is narrow complexes. So the P is present, normal in shape, but we cannot say much about the PR interval because it looks like the PR interval is so bizarre. So this is because the QRS complex is not following the P wave. If we look closely, we can see that the P to P interval is the same. From P to the next P to the next P, the P to P interval is the same. And R to R interval is also regular throughout the strip. However, both the P and the R are dissociated. So we can say that the P and the QRS complexes are disassociated. So sometimes this thing just happen. The atria and the ventricles are now following their own pathways. They are drifting away. But don't worry, the heart still goes on because we still have a perfusing rhythm, which is the junctional escape rhythm. We call it junctional escape rhythm because it is narrow complex. So it is originating from the junction. So this is also a similar ECG in which we can see there is regular rhythm, which is broad complex and it is very bradycardic. The rate is about 33 beats per minute. So we can see that the P wave is present, in normal in shape, but there is this association between the P and also the QRS complex. So this is also a third degree every block. But the perfusing rhythm is the ventricular escape rhythm. So we know it is a ventricular escape rhythm because the QRS complex is broad. So this is a ventricular rhythm. So in first degree AV block, there is some delay in the conduction. Even though the PR is prolonged, the P wave is always conducted. As compared to the second degree AV block. So in second degree AV block, there are P's that are not conducted, or what we call misbeat. So in Mobis type 1, there is progressive prolongation of the PR interval until there is a drop beat. And then after the drop beat, the cycle is reset. In the Mobis type 2, the PR interval is similar, but there is a number of non-conducted P's or drop beat. In third degree AV block, or what we call complete heart block, none of the P wave is conducted. So the P and the QRS complexes are seen independently and they are following their own pathways. There is also atrioventricular disassociation. And then the rhythm is maintained by junctional or ventricular escape rhythm. So if there is no perfusing rhythm, then the patient would not survive. So with that, I conclude the class on Brady Arrhythmias.